I saw some of the bullets going past the hall that I was right next to. It's a scenario that's played out all too many times in our country. They have established a very, very tight perimeter around the school. A gunman invades a sanctuary of a school, rendering all of us helpless and asking what could we have done. It sounded like uh, heavy, uh, heavy shots as in a uh, long rifle or some kind of uh, an automatic weapon. At the Desert Sands Unified School District, Director of Security Jeff Kay asks that question every day. The active shooter situation probably isn't going to happen, but if we train for it and we're ready for it, uh, th th it'll save lives. What we know is the shooting stops quickly after police arrive. And 88 percent of the uh, active shooter situation in the schools throughout the country, the uh, shooters killed himself as soon as the cops got there because they don't want to confront the police. That's their, their, their moment of glory is ruined when the police show up. Case says it's about a 10 minute window when the shooting starts and police arrive. Just 10 minutes from safety or tragedy. That's what Kay focuses his school drills around. We have to lock down the kids and keep them safe or we have to evacuate them or we have to do something to keep them safe till the police get there. That's something Kay calls enhanced lockdown. Barricade the door. Do something. Make your door harder to get through. Uh, move the kids if if there's glass windows in the classroom. Find a safe room. You know, the, just just do something innovative. Uh, use your imagination to keep the kids safer. During Virginia Tech, bracing the door saved some students' lives. He was shooting through the door, but they were laying on the floor, uh, bracing the door with their hands and feet. And the gunman gave up trying to get in. Went to another classroom, shot the lock off, and went in and uh, unfortunately killed the people who were in that room. Case says the district's training program is made up what law enforcement has learned from other school shootings, including a shooting in Reno, Nevada, where he responded as a police officer. It's like we changed our response to airline hijackers after 9 11. Uh, there comes a point in time when you have to fight back. Some people believe that should include bringing guns on campus. We have a moral obligation that the next Vicki Soto who is faced with inexplicable evil, that she not be left defenseless. A bill introduced in California would allow teachers to carry a gun. Very comforting <laughs> to know that my children have one extra step of protection, especially in the schools. But the district's teachers worry it could spell disaster. When you've got students around, who's to say you're not going to accidentally hit a student. Kay says there's some truth to that. As a firearms instructor, I see when you put a little bit of stress on somebody at the range, their shot ratio, their hit ratio, accuracy ratio goes to 5%. So that's not good in a crowded classroom or a crowded school. So the initial reaction has to be take care of the kids, save the kids, get them out of harm's way. However, in trained hands, like a school resource officer, Kay says it could help save lives, but it comes at a cost. To put a police officer in every school, like uh, some people suggest, would be about $5.4 million a year. One preventative measure that doesn't cost the district too much money is this website, PSST World. Desert Sands is one of the first in the country to use it. It allows students to report suspicious activity they see anonymously. With a click of a mouse, security is notified right away. Every time there's a school shooting, somebody knew about it. Somebody knew this kid was acting funny. Somebody knew this kid was acting a little strange. Students we talked with say they'd use it. I would actually strongly agree with that one. That one's, that one's like, yeah, yeah, I, I would be on that site if that, that, if I ever needed that. Yeah, I think it'd be a good idea, just in case. So if you're scared to give information, that way you could go ahead and do it anonymously so, so nobody knows. Kay admits there isn't one simple solution to stopping these violent acts, but will do as much as he can with the funding he's got. Let's train for the worst and hope for the best.